we go. Right. So, um, welcome back uh, to uh, 2024. Ah, uh, we're going to start um, uh, with lesson, obviously lesson one, and we're going to be doing a project where we're going to look at landscapes. But um, a few, uh, some other people mentioned, oh, wouldn't mind doing some animals in the landscapes as well. So we decided to combine those two things together so that we could um, produce some work based on that, that theme. Um, so today, what we're going to be doing is starting off by uh, looking at um, some deer or stags in, in, in a forest setting. OK, um, we're going to be looking at something that um, I haven't introduced before, and it's called notan, uh, which is the Japanese, a Japanese word for uh, light and dark. Uh, and it's about the balance of light and dark within a picture. And the reason why you and you might have heard me talking quite a lot over the um, over the other classes that we've done about adding a bit more contrast or making it a bit lighter there and making things stand out a little bit more and so forth. So this is a little bit about that, but it's also about um, recognizing where the darkest areas and the most important areas are in your picture and where the lightest areas are in your picture as well so that you can uh, take things out and put things in in order to create uh, harmony and balance within your work okay so you will have seen on the website um, that I shared some images so we've got about 16 different pictures of the stag and we've got um, one in black and white one in color and then we've got a really weird looking one that's like just two tones, which is literally a black and, and a white um, image. Um, so a lot of detail seems to have uh, disappeared and everything. So we're going to use that weird version to help map out a, a composition for some work that we'll do a little bit later. All right. And I'll explain a bit more about it now. What I'm going to do now is talk about NOTAN a little bit. Um, give show you some examples and then um, explain how you know you can start drawing uh, and using these things as well. Okay, um, I originally got it, uh, the um, idea from a book that I found online. So I got the book and then discovered that, and it was about pattern and things. But then I found out that uh, that it's, it can also be used uh, in in paintings and artworks rather than just patterns. So. I've looked at that and I thought, well, somebody else mentioned that they want to look at uh, how to create better compositions and things. And that is what NOTAM essentially can help us to do within an artwork. OK, so um, I'm going to put us on the uh, on the uh, desktop or well, not the desktop, but oh, not, not that one. No, I want this one. <laughs> OK, right. So um, I'll go through this a little bit so that we can um, just get an idea of what what I'm on about. Um, so down here, you can see a similar thing to what we've got um, this evening. We've got on the far left hand side there, we've got a black and white image. And then in the middle, we've got a color image and then something different uh, on the um, center right. And then on the far side, again, something slightly different again. So I'll just go through this and I'll yabber on a little bit about um, how it works and things so you can get an idea of what we're going to try and do. Um, essentially, we're going to be just drawing today, um, but we're going to use these things as an idea of how to um, draw better or how to construct a better composition. So notan is a Japanese uh, term that translates light and dark, translates as light and dark in art Notan refers to the strategic use of positive and negative spaces to create balance and harmony and visual interest within a composition. OK, so um, we're going to use um, we're going to use the, this idea to help uh, construct a picture. Now, on, on the left, on the right hand side, you can see that there's one picture uh, that has been developed from the black and white image on, on the left and the color in the middle. And you can see it's been reduced down to very simple forms. And that's to help you um, when you come to paint later to spot um, what is the most important thing that you want to emphasize. Now, the uh, one in the center to the right 
you can see that there isn't a mountain in the background, which you can see in the color photograph um, just to the left there. Now, if we go right over to the right hand side, you can see that the artist has decided, yes, the mountain is important. So that has been shaded in very dark in order to recognize uh, later on that this will be a key part of the painting rather than it being too faint and disappear and stuff, just like it did in the black and white one over here. So it's, it's a tool basically to help you understand composition. All right, so let's have a look at a few more bits about this. So it emphasizes the importance of achieving equilibrium, which is balance in a composition. Uh, achieving balance in Notan design creates visually harmonious and aesthetically pleasing work. Um, positive and negative space. Positive space represents the main subject or objects in a composition. Uh, despite its simplicity, Notan creates complex and intricate compositions through thoughtful arrangement. Negative space is the background areas around and between subjects. So in a minute ago, we was looking at the mountain and the mountain was gone, so it's negative. So we put the positive in by shading it in. Simplicity and complexity. Notan encourages simplicity in design by reducing the elements to two values, light and dark. So even those mid-tones that we might have seen in the photograph become reduced down to either a dark uh, black or a white. Okay, so let's have a look at the next thing that I've got on here and over here. So uh, I put these in here for fun, really, because um, they're black and white and they are no tan uh, in that they're just very simple black and white images, um, but they've got much more complexity in that there's pattern and line in here as well. And the, thing, the, the other reason I wanted to show these is because they were generated using artificial intelligence. <laughs> so um, they're quite interesting from that point of view. A few buttons were clicked and up these popped, but um, again, they look at how the balance uh, is achieved within a picture. So I just put that in there for a bit of fun, really. And um, so we're going to be, uh, I'm not gonna read through all this one, but it's gonna help us create contrast in the image. So if you remember, I mentioned, um, I am always going on about adding more contrast, getting darker in some areas and lighter in others. So we're going to be looking a bit more closely at that. And we're going to be enhancing the composition by deciding which bits are important when we're drawing it and understanding the shapes. Um, so a no tan itself will be a guide to help you understand the shapes when you come to do a painting later. OK, so this may sound a little bit um, complicated at first, but um, once you start trying it out, it's one of those things where you start having a go and you start to understand things a little bit more as well, hopefully. Um, so let's just have a look where I was. There I was. Right. Um, here's a really good example by an artist called Stephen Berry. He's done quite a few videos on this. Um, but you can see in the center there, you've got a color um, image of a field and a landscape. Now, if I was to go on the computer and turn up the black and white or contrast within the image, a no tan on the computer would turn out like the one on the left. So just basically two blocks, one uh, white and one black at the bottom. So all the details have been removed because in the field and in the field there, the tones are too, uh, too similar for the computer to pick up. So the artist essentially picks out the details that are going to be important for the picture. So in here, we've got the lines, perspective lines that lead into the distance showing the uh, shape and the perspective in the field, which has been drawn in or painted in, in this case, with ink by the artist. So um, we now recognize what is important to then focus on with contrast, shape and composition in our picture when we paint it later on. OK, um, and. So it shows the understructure of a painting. So the blacks and whites are like the understructure of the painting. Um, it makes, I'll just move that down a little bit. 
So it makes the image much more apparent and obvious showing the patterns and shapes of an image. So we're going to be drawing today, but it's a great skill for um, understanding how to put together a really nice drawing and composition within your picture. OK, um, so this study can be used to inform you of what is to come in a painting later. It is a shape and pattern defining tool that uses values to do this. So values are shades, uh, blacks and whites and so forth. OK, right. Um, here are a few examples of uh, some, some of the photographs that we're going to be uh, drawing from. So I've put in quite a selection. Now, um, one of the things you um, I requested that you do for this lesson is to print off uh, a picture um, that you would like to draw from that selection. Um, so if you haven't done that, on the email is a link, or a few, I'll put it in a few places, for you to be able to go and find the picture that you want to use. Um, I think a few of you have already done that, which is brilliant. Um, so choose one of the photos to use and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to explain how to grid it up and everything, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use black and white photographs to help create these. Um, the one on the left there is the, which I've just clicked off, the one on the left is the picture that I actually used um, for this, uh, for the work that I did in preparation for today. So let's just get rid of dear one for a minute. That's what I called it. So uh, here are the two images that I've used. So um, just see if I can shift it over. There we go. So I've drawn, um, I've drawn this photograph that you can see here, um, and I've also I also went on the computer and made this black and white image here. Now you can see again, like in the field picture, a lot of detail has gone missing, but it helps me to see where the main shapes are within the image so that when I come to shade it, when I'm drawing, I can see where those darks and light tones are in order to help me then create a more um, interesting and balanced picture, but also one that shows the form and the shape of the deer that I'm looking at. When I say deer, I mean stag. OK, um, now the Notan, the black and white photo that I've reduced down to almost two tones, um, obviously excludes some details um, because the tones weren't strong enough when I used the computer. So on my on my painting, I may choose to emphasize, for example, um, the reflections in the water. So I would then go back to this, if I painted it, and I would add the white bits in so that I can see those when I'm, I can be reminded of those highlights when I'm, um, when I'm doing the painting. So I can understand the balance and the structure of the picture. OK. Um, Right, I'll just turn that one off and I'll go over to this one again. Uh, there we go. Turn that one off. See if that's me. And here's another example of what I've just been talking about. So we've got um, two pictures of the deer. We've got a black and white one and we've got a color one. So um, most of the most of this image is quite dark. OK, um, obviously we can see a lot of detail in here, but um, we can learn more about the structure of the picture by looking at something like this, which you would have seen uh, if you've been on the website or the drive, you would have seen. So here, look, I can see that the important parts of the picture, some of them are evident. So we've got light areas on his back and around his face and on some of the antler parts. Uh, I might think, right, well, I can't see much of the lower half of my uh, deer or stag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some highlights down in the bottom left hand corner to make that area come out. I might also want some of the uh, fur under his chin and some more details um, emphasizing in the horns or the antlers, as they call them. OK. So that's the general idea of that. So I'm going to show you the drawing that I did that I mentioned a few minutes ago on the desk, hopefully. 
There we go. Oh, it's a bit wobbly. Just leave that over there. So this is the drawing that I've made. You'll see from it, if I can get in a bit closer, that it's quite harsh looking. You know, the tones and things um, aren't like, there aren't too many mid-tones in here really, because I've gone quite heavy with my, um, with my pencil. So I've used a 6B pencil to make it really dark. Uh, and to show you where I've seen these highlights and shadows from looking at the Notan photograph that I collected earlier. So here, look, you can see that the splash has come out really clearly on here and some of the background areas. I have actually got this and put it on the screen. So, wink. So there's the um, photograph and there's the Notan just there. So when I uh, when I was drawing this picture, I was looking closely at where these highlights and shadows. So you can see there's a highlight on his um, on his uh, ribs there on the stomach. There's one on the back of the the, the, the stag and there's some around the, the front. And then we've got quite a few on the face. So these are all important areas. But um, I want to make sure that when I paint it later, I'm going to get a really good effect. Or when I draw it even, I'm going to get a really good effect in here, in the um, reflections. So if I was to edit that a little bit more, that's the um, highlights and shadows on the Notan. I would possibly get this and maybe a white pencil or a or a pen or something, or if I was painting the Notan, which I'll show you in a minute, I've done a painted version, um, I would say, right, actually, around this area, I want there to be the shadows a little bit, or the, sorry, the reflections a little bit clearer than here as well. So, and then I might say, well, I want to be able to see the front of his Fur a bit more, so I might add some more highlights on there as well. I might exaggerate this area a little bit, and then I might say, Well, the tree is a bit too dark, so I'm going to lighten that up in the back there, or I'm going to take out some of the leaves or something, so so that the, the um, antlers stand out a little bit better. So you start editing this or a Notan to help you do it, okay? To help you decide which parts of the composition goes. And this was a really quick Notan. They don't have to take ages, but they can really help you to understand how you're going to paint it and bring out details later on. Okay, so I'll just put that over there for a minute. So um, we're going to start drawing then. Now I'm going to I'm going to explain how to um, grid uh, and draw a photo like this accurately. Uh, so you'll need a ruler and stuff like that. Now a lot of you I, I know have seen me do this a few times. Although I said that today in class, I said, "Oh, well, if if the new the newer students need um, need to know this, then please stay at the front." And a few of the students I've had for quite a while wanted a reminder of how to enlarge a picture as well. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to talk about um, some drawing techniques that you can use as well to um, create your work. I'm just looking for a piece of paper. Um, there we go. This will do. Right. So <clears throat> if you're ready to get cracking with your drawing then please do. Um, I, I'm going to go through how to um, add a grid and enlarge um, a photograph, uh, first of all. So if you want to see that, please carry on. If you've got any questions right now about this, then please ask. But um, you'll need to have in front of you your black and white picture, your colour picture, and your like weird picture which is like the one just up there on the screen okay 
So has anyone got any questions? Is everyone, if you're happy, please uh, nod. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Hello, Susan. All right. Nice to see you. Uh, Verity, I hope you're okay. If you want me to go through anything specifically with you, then please, please ask. But I'm going to show you now and everybody how to enlarge um, a photograph um, to the same proportions and things. So if you want to um, come on um, or you want to send me a message on, um, on Zoom, just let me know and I will answer any questions you want me to. Is there, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya. Yes, Mary. Is there any uh, is there any need to do it um, large, or are we okay on A4 paper? Yes. Is there anything in the next few weeks that we need to do it bigger? No, no. I just when I started drawing, um, when I started drawing this, I just wanted to draw bigger, basically, because I felt that then I could really get into the picture and explore it. Yeah, I, I said this morning, if you'd want to do it a similar size or not much bigger or the same size, that's absolutely fine. Um, well, essentially, what I'm aiming to do next is um, get you to practice making some of these, some more of these notams, and edit your photo, uh, edit your compositions. But um, later, I want to use, um, I want us to use colour pencils as well. So, We'll be converting some of these ideas into colour pencil drawings later. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Any other so, questions? Jamie, sorry. Can, can oh, I yeah. ask? Yes. I've got the three pictures that yes. you know. Fantastic. The three different pictures. So, which one would I use to start my drawing? Which so, one? I would start. I mean, I started with this colour version. Right, the okay. colour one. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, and then as yeah. you're working, you can start seeing some of the dark and the light tone. So when you're shading, you can see it on this a bit easier because yeah. the distraction of colour is gone. So essentially, that's what the Notan does, the picture above me there. That's what the Notan does. It takes away the distraction of, uh, well, there is a bit of texture in here, to be honest, but it takes away the distraction of the texture, the colour, and the detail and just focuses on what's important within the, the composition. So it's a way, it's a tool basically to help you construct a better arrangement. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Okay, cool. So um, I'll put that over there for a minute. So to enlarge, <coughs> excuse me, I've still got a bit of a sore throat here. So um, bear with me. Right. I'll just move back slightly so I've got a bit more room. There we go. So this is what you uh, do in order to enlarge your um, photograph. Um, so if, you, if you've printed it off, the size that I've got it here, so this is half, about half of an A4 um, sheet of paper. If your printout is about this sort of size, you may decide that you want to enlarge it, okay? If you printed it up A4 size, you might think, well, okay, I've got A4 paper or that's big enough for me. Then you can um, literally make a grid for that. And I'll explain that as we go along as well. So the first thing to do with enlarging a photograph is to put it in the corner of your sheet of paper like this. Uh, and this is, the, uh, this is a technique that I kind of worked on to help everyone avoid having to do tons and tons of measuring so you put a dot on each corner of the photograph like that and then take the photograph and put it to the side for a bit um, get my room here. Uh, and then what you do is you take the, the corner dot that you've got up here and join it up with the other one, but keep going like that. So you basically drawn a line that goes across the top of the picture. And then come down here and do the same thing down the length or the height of the piece of paper. All right, now the next bit is you're drawing a diagonal line. Now, this diagonal line that goes through here and off. Of this corner is going to be the thing that helps you decide how much bigger 
your picture is going to be. You can draw this line because you'll you can use that later as well. So the longer this line gets, the bigger your picture can be. So I've drawn a diagonal line from corner to corner of my original photograph. Okay. Uh, now after this dot, I'm going to decide how much bigger I want it to be. So if I want it to be as big as possible, I might put a dot there down on the corner. Okay. Then draw a vertical line up the top like that and you can see I've got the three sides of my picture and then do exactly the same going the other way. Um, I haven't measured it, I'm, I'm doing this bit by sight but if you want to measure the you know to make sure it's in line with the other lines then you can um, measure either from the edge of the paper make sure so, for example, from the edge of the paper is about nine and a half centimetres. So I go over here and put nine and a half centimetres, which it matches up. So, and then join it up. So now I've basically stretched that picture out in the same proportions, like you might do on a computer if you was enlarging a picture on a Word or Photoshop or something. So I've stretched it out and it's now the same proportions as this, but larger. I could say, right, I don't want it that big. Actually, I want it to be that big and do exactly the same vertically and horizontally that way. OK, I'm going to keep it this size. So now I need to do another line that goes from corner to corner. So let me just make sure because my rule is not long enough. I'm just going to get it as accurate as I can from here. So that's my second line. Now the centre here is going to be the centre for my four boxes. My picture. One, two, and we're dividing the picture up into smaller areas so that you can actually look individually at different sections of your picture in order to draw those sections and then eventually make the whole image okay so next thing to do is make another cross do the same again do the same again and do the same again like that okay and then we can make more squares or rectangles going this way and this way. So it's I call it a grid drawing because you're making a grid and you're using the grid to look at individual parts of the image. So there we go. So four big squares and they're all rectangles and then four smaller ones in each of those quarters like that. So with your photograph, you do exactly the same thing. I'll just turn, put it there. So with the photograph, I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll do exactly the same thing. Doesn't matter which way around you do it, as long as you get the same amount of squares in. Sorry for the wobble. So again, corner to corner. And it's a great way of doing it because it means that you don't have to sit there and measure everything and work out the exact um, lines and so forth or measurements in order to get those squares. So I've done that. It's like a star through the middle. You do the diagonal ones first, the vertical and horizontal ones, and then. Create kind of a diamond in the middle. Now, if your picture is particularly dark, you could use a white pencil or a white pen, which I sometimes use. 
to make things stand out. In fact, we had somebody this morning do exactly that so that you could see the lines a bit better. Like that. Okay. So now I've got the same grid on here as I have on here. Okay. So if we zoom back out again. There we go. So um, now what you need to do is choose which area you'd like to start drawing first. Um, now a few little tricks you can do um, because often there's a lot of information within a picture and perhaps you'd just like to be able to draw the head accurately to begin with. So one thing that I sometimes say and it actually helps you to see where you're drawing is fold sheet of paper so that you can see one particular area of it. Um, I'm going to do that again. So, I mean, often when I'm drawing these things, I just draw them straight out um, by sight. Um, but this just helps you to get started. <laughs> it's very small now, but um, you can see by getting nice and close, this. Um, this square here, this rectangle, is this one here. All right, so <coughs> I can now start to draw out the different shapes. Now, one of the things, another thing that I often say, uh, and this goes back to the Notan a little bit as well, is not just to look at the shape of the animal or the shapes you're looking at is to look at the background shape. So the negative shapes in the background behind the, the deer or the, the stag are here. So you could um, forget about the deer a little bit and just draw those. So half, just over halfway up this rectangle is where it starts. And then halfway across is where the ear kind of begins. So if I go ooh, sort of around there, and you'll find that you know sometimes you, you you don't get it you don't get it right the first time, and uh, like I've just done there, but you can make alterations as you go along. So draw um, lightly to begin with. Um, when I'm drawing freehand, I'll do lots and lots of lines and then hone in on the details and so forth. So there's the ear, and the antler look up here finishes just in the corner. Like that, and then about halfway down, or just past that ear bit we did earlier, is the next bit of the antler, and then a bit further across is the next bit, a bit further over than that, actually. There we go. So, this is the thing about drawing is you're always learning about what's there. And you're building up that understanding and knowledge of it as you go along. I'm going to go down here to the bottom of the square now, rectangle. And his snout isn't, is going, actually it's going over. I'm not looking quite where I should do there. His snout is just on the edge there. See, I've folded over and gone to the next square. Sometimes the shapes might look a bit weird to begin with as well. Or you think, well, that doesn't look like what I'm drawing, but it will be almost kind of abstract to begin with. <coughs> there we go. And the eye is somewhere just below this antler, so it's somewhere. Yeah, like that. All right, so I've got the outline of the head. Obviously, there's lots more to do there. And then if I turn it over, I can start on the next bit with the antlers. So in this triangle here, you can see that there in the very corner is that spiky bit in there. And it comes 
down this way. I'm just doing this very quickly now. Sometimes it helps to do things quickly when you're drawing anyway, because it helps you loosen up and then you start to notice things and then gradually you tighten down into the detail a little bit more. But everybody works in slightly different ways, so that's something to bear in mind as well. Some people really don't get along very well with grids like this and prefer just to draw straight out. But it does often help to have something to reference against. Okay, so I've drawn out the main shapes of part of this picture. Um, I'm going to carry on with the other one that I was doing in just a minute. Um, but you can see there how we're starting to understand the basic shapes of the picture. Okay, so as you're shading, refer back to this, the Notan, and the black and white image. I did have a black and white photograph on my desk here, but I can't see it now. But um, have a look at this uh, and where those main points of interest are. That's going to help you decide how to then go about shading your drawing as you develop it. All right. So it's going to show the and as I said earlier, it's going to show you the understructure of your drawing. Okay. Cool. Now, has anyone got any questions at this point? Everyone's working away over there. Looks good. Cool. All right. I'm going to, one thing I wanted to do as well is just do a few drawing techniques as well for people to have a look at. I was doing a few of them earlier with another student. So um, <clears throat> you can do lots of different uh, mark making techniques to add texture into your work. We're focusing mainly on tones and shadows today. Um, but on here, you can see that I've used lots of overlapping lines, um, uh, dashes and arcing uh, lines and things, and then smaller lines on the fur of, of this, I was going to say rhino, <laughs> of, this, uh, of this stag. I've used much smaller lines in here and then larger lines in here. But you can see how harsh it is. It's very, very dark and light, which is because I've been looking at the pictures that you can see on the screen um, above me just here. All right. So um, if you're, I don't know, but if, if some, if one or two of you are new to using um, the pencils to do mark making and shading and things, I'm just going to do a couple on here to give you some ideas about it. So. The first um, most obvious one uh, for a lot of people would be uh, just shading, basically, I suppose. So starting, and this is good, if you haven't done it for a while or you want some practice or whatever, the, this is a really nice way to A, get you warmed up and B, get sort of a bit more creative and also just to loosen up a little bit, really, because sometimes we, we start off wanting to be so like absolutely perfect with everything we're doing. but um, by doing some sketching and things like that, uh, using some things like this, it's going to give you a little bit more, um, it's going to loosen you up and allow you to sort of be a bit more flexible about the way you approach what you're doing. OK, so uh, shading for the dark tones. And this is a 6B pencil I've got here. Apply more pressure and release the pressure and get lighter and lighter as you draw, as you shade, all the way down like that. So that's um, the basic sort of shading technique. Uh, now there's lots of other things you can do and the important thing to remember about graphite is you can work over what you've done as well. So with, um, for example, these techniques on here, these are lots of lineal uh, techniques that we've got here. You could, uh, let's take, um, I can't actually, broken lines or, um, yeah, let's do, do broken lines. So you could add the broken lines over the top of that. Like 
like that. And we were looking at the, the grasses here and how I've used lots of um, arcing lines. So we could do arcing lines like this. And sometimes you'll, I mean, even with, like, with things like I do a bit of lino printing at the moment or lino cutting, um, when I do that, I have a spare piece of lino that I go and do some few marks on just to get me kind of into the spirit of it. So that's arcing lines. And then we've got hatching. And you can release the pressure on the hatches um, as you go down, just like we do with the shading. Make the lines go over each other. And then go back the other way. And you can build up tone in that way, but with some interesting marks as well. Um, horizontal lines, but these ones look a bit wobbly. Well, so rather than ruled perfect lines, we can do ones that look a bit more. And I'm twisting my pencil as I do this as well. And then we could do dashes on top. And then we could shade over the top of that as well. I'm running out of pencil here. Do circles overlapping each other. All right, so. It's great to sort of try out a few ideas like this. Stippling's really nice too. It's, it's nice to try a few ideas like that. If you're kind of feeling a bit wary of shading or how do I do this texture, get yourself a spare piece of paper and have a little play around as well. Okay, so now we've got the basic idea of what we're trying to do. Um, the thing to do next is to obviously grid up your um, photograph um, and I use the the color one just up there as you uh, saw a few minutes ago so grid that up in the way that I showed you and then um, tr if you want to try to enlarge the image that you're um, working on um, it does help to enlarge it sometimes because it means you can get further into um, the details etc and all that sort of thing so in a minute you'll see me um, adding some more tone and shadow into the picture. Now I'm using the, um, you can see in my hand just there on the right that I'm using the note hand to note actually where that there are specific, there are um, much darker areas than the, perhaps I would be able to see um, with the, um, the color picture, which has the distraction of more texture and um, more detail and obviously color and things like that. So without those distractions and looking at the Notan there on the screen, which is on the right, uh, sorry, on the left, you can see that, oh gosh, actually that the back of the, the, the stag is, is much darker 